What's up, geeks? <laughs> Welcome to the New Age Geeks channel, where technical issues are part of the game. Uh, if you're new here, this is Forging Fates, our live D&D show, which we run every other week. Uh, and it is a sober D&D campaign set in the critical role world of Exandria, where you are partnered with a nonprofit group known as the Phoenix, and the Phoenix is building a vibrant movement of people in recovery, aiming to end the stigma around the rehabilitation journey from substance use through a sober, active community of like-minded people. They have a new app that you can use to schedule in-person events in 36 states or virtual events around the globe, including yoga, D&D, meditation, and book clubs, just to name a few. So click the link below in our description to download the app and connect with over 77,000 members of the Phoenix. Nailed it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who is next? I'm next, Joe. Uh, <laughs> hi, guys. I'm Damiano. Uh, you could call me Dom. If you would like to support the channel, you can drop a tip in the tip jar, check out our online merch shop, or we have a Patreon that will give patrons the opportunity to vo vote in polls, have a special Discord channel just for you and the cast, and have your name called out at the beginning of all our shows. Other ways to support us are through Twitch subscriptions which unlock exclusive emotes by our amazing community member and moderator, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Uh, as a reminder, you have Amazon. if you have Amazon Prime, you have Twitch Prime. So we would appreciate it if you use that on us. Just don't forget to resubscribe every month. And if you don't have any cash to throw our way, we completely get it. Times are tough out there for a lot of people. Um, you can still support us by subscribing to our socials, um, we have Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, and all of them are linked below. So liking, sharing, and watching them will support us as well. And we'd really appreciate it if you helped let the world know that we are a community worth taking the journey with. Okay. Um, we have one little announcement that some of you may have seen on our social medias. We now officially have character art. Um, yes. It is finally happened. Oh, that is the wrong thing. Let me. Eh, don't. I'm Jacqueline Wilmot, Director of Volunteer and Community Engagement at the Phoenix. We're on a mission to help as many people as we can. I'm <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hopefully, hopefully, no one read any of that information. Um, we have official character art. I, um, there it is. is. Yeah. There it is. Um, this is done by Cherry Demon. You can find them on Fiverr. Um, it's just simply Cherry Demon is their uh, username. Uh, they did this for us, and uh, we're pretty happy. Yay! So hopefully uh, we'll be seeing this show up on some of our graphics soon. And uh, if you have any character art or fan art you want to do, these are now our official character art. You look so good. All right. Love it. Jumping back into it. Does anyone have anything else? Uh, I would Let's like wait. to say uh, Cherry Demon made those for us, but it was Taz that threw them together for yes. us. Yes, yes. The individual art is Cherry Demon, but the composite that you showed is actually the one, the only Taz. Yes. Oh. All right. Let's see here. Picking mm. up. That's two. Oh. Can we What's have that? a good berry? Hmm? Yes. Uh, do you know who you're having next week? Yes. Uh, All right. John Halcyon Stein uh, will be uh, coming to talk about Burning Man and running a Burning Man theme camp and what the Burning Man principles mean to him. Awesome. That's news I didn't even know yet. So <laughs> <laughs> exclusive information. So uh, anyone else got anything? Mm -mm. All right. So. Picking up where we last left off, having survived the explosion of Marie Lynn's, and oh, uh, we do have one other announcement. I apologize before we get started. Uh, Joe has decided to uh, depart from the company. He he uh, has decided he no longer wants to take the journey with us through his own, you know. Uh, it was his own uh, his own decision, and we wish him the best. And he uh, 
let him know that there's always a space for him here if he ever decides he wants to come back. Uh, we love him, and we hope he's good, happy, and healthy. Um, but I think that's it. Okay. So, now, picking back up where we left off. The team, having survived the explosion of Marie Lynn's, made their way, just barely, uh, gathered the body of Linden and made their way towards the Platinum Dragon's uh, temple in the the ward. Which is temple the, ward? Temple ward, yeah. I, I, I didn't want to think it was that simple. My brain don't work that easy, guys. Um, so, they made their way to the temple ward with the body of Linden having restored uh, their team member throughout the time period of... I don't know what I'm even saying anymore. I'm so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> the They made their way towards the Platinum Dragon's Rest with the body of Linden. Um, bringing the body inside, they began the resurrection ritual. Each of them denoting a piece of uh, begging for Linden's soul through their each various means for his soul to return to his body. Uh, eventually, the the it was successful, and Linden was brought back to life. From there, they also discovered their estranged party member of Tristan. Uh, as he rejoined the party, they discovered some history about his past and learned a little bit about why he had decided to depart the group for the time being. Um, the team eventually coming to a rest. Thinnick was plagued by another nightmare and the rogue went on a expedition for the evening to clear her mind and have her own adventure. Yeah, but we didn't notice any of that. No. Stuff didn't happen. Away. Um, from there, the uh, as you guys got a long night's rest, you all leveled up, so everyone is now level four now. So we can all celebrate that. Um, from there, the team assembled the next day and prepared to depart from the Platinum Dragon's Rest. Uh, and unless I'm missing something... Oh, while you guys were at uh, the, the Ruins of Marie Lens, the frog-like entity seemingly made himself known, claiming if I'm not mistaken, to be a member of the clasp, and... Nope. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think I wrote that, and I forgot, I forgot to say it. Um, yeah, that's nothing. <laughs> okay. Disregard, then. So, um, but he made himself known and claimed responsibility for the explosion. That being said, as... Unless I'm missing anything, we all have gathered... Go ahead. You missed one thing. Missed you killed one. Stir. I did. I did do that. I was pretty happy about it, too. Hmm. Wow. You left Fry alive, but you killed Stir. I did. That's right. So, a moment of silence for Stir. It's not the only one who's dead. No, Seamus and the Knolls are also dead, too. But, yes, you know, that's right. they're less important. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... As you all gather up in the foyer of the Platinum Dragon's Rest, uh, the in the early morning day, having gathered, uh, having gotten a long night's rest, what do we want to do? Um, it's still pretty early, so the in, majority of the temple is is pretty quiet in this evening. Just a few. Uh, Individuals dressed in the Platinum Dragon's robes, making their way around, cleaning out the the pews from the night uh, the night before, getting things set up for the day. Um, towards the back of the temple, from where you had come up from the basement, where Tristan's body had been, 
uh, down in that like medical ward that that um, he had been in where you had met him, you see a uh, an old male dwarf, long black hair with white robes with stripes of silver along the edges, um, a long black beard with a few wisps of silver uh, on the sides, make his way up. Uh, at his side, you see uh, a half-elf, harsh gaze, black hair with the left side uh, shaved with a, a scar from the side of their head all the way down to the uh, corner of their mouth. Bright silver armor, plate armor across their body, um, making their way up, up the stairs and towards your group. Uh, Tristan? You recognize uh, at least the dwarf as Tamar. He, uh, that he is the keeper of the temple. The half elf you do not recognize, however. Um, Finnick, roll a history check for me. Uh, history or religion, whichever you prefer. Um, um, which I have disadvantage on just because of exhaustion. Okay, that's not bad. Uh, 15. Okay. Uh, you immediately recognize that bright silver armor that the half-elf is wearing. Uh, you've seen it a few times um, in Isildra. It is the armor of uh, the Platinum Dragon Guard. They are a, a, a pseudo-religious military organization that's kind of new, new-ish. They've been around for about 30 years now. Um, but they have come up and they are devoted to the uh, Platinum Dragon, but all of them ride wyverns that are armored uh, in similar fashion. But um, that's pretty much all you would know about that. And sorry, you said they were like fighters? They are like a, a, a religious, a religious uh, military organization, kind of like, like okay. Knights Templar almost. Okay. But they are relatively new. That besides that, you're not that's all you would pretty much know. Um oh, that is something I forgot. I want to unmute. Music. There mm-hmm. we go. Okay. Um so as the pair approach all of you, uh Samar looks towards you, Tristan. Ah, uh, uh, Sir Tristan, how are you feeling today? I guess it's best as I could feel. That's, best that's, good. that's good. Um, the rest of you are are have you all been attended to properly while you've uh, been at our temple? Physically, I, yeah. Well, it's uh, rested, but. What's was the beds comfortable? I mean, we have comment cards if you'd like to leave a, a review. Mm-hmm. Fine. Okay. Well, actually, yeah. Uh... Just roll. Uh, one more. Well, roll more wisdom check for me. Just straight wisdom. Yeah. Which is at disadvantage. A four. Okay. Never mind. Carry on. Don't worry about it. Clover. Uh, you notice the face of the half elf contorts slightly as sh- as they kind of scan your group when their eyes land on Finnick. Okay, I'm just going to take note of it. Yep. Just a small twinge of recognition, but goes unsaid. So do we have any other business here? No, we got to get the little guy to... uh, The guard? The medics at the guard, yeah. Uh, I'm... uh, I, I don't... Is really the guard the best place for us to go right now? Where else? 
Lyndon, I don't know where stay I'll here. Bring you. I don't. I mean, if there's this plot, it seems to. I don't. I don't know. Is are we really going to even get anything out of them anymore? Lyndon, we already know they're corrupt. Lyndon. Already... We're not leaving you alone ever again. Now either you stay here with the shiny people or you go to the guard. Your choice. He's right, Lyndon. You need you're not in the best condition right now. I mean you I I just I can't ever see you like that again. Um and until we take care of business, which is what we're gonna do. You have to stay somewhere safe. Um, Lyndon, how are you feeling, though? Like, after the rest? Uh, I mean, my sides don't feel great. Yeah, that makes sense. But other than that, you're fine? I think so. I don't, I don't notice anything, at least. Well, and I know yesterday they said you should be fine for now. Uh, I'm the the process of divine resurrection will, uh, of course, exhaust the unfortunate soul, but otherwise he should recover within a few days of rest. He's more than welcome to stay here if that's what you know you would all like to just. Do you think they would like? know? Oh, sorry. No, Whisper, go ahead. What was it like, Lyndon? Uh, well, I remember just open space for a bit. Um, and um, I... I remember seeing like a, a shimmery gate and I remember passing through it. Um, but after that, that's, that's about all I remember. That's a little weird. Uh, what, what Lyndon uh, saw would be the divine gate, the, uh, the barrier between the divine realm and our own. Hmm. It's no surprise you don't remember much after that, though. Um, what, what I was going to say is I, I know the choice is up to Lyndon, but you guys, I don't know how much we want to move him around. Like, I know he'd be pretty safe here, but I also don't know what they would do back at the guards, like the medics. I, I'm okay. I let's, let's go and do what we have to do. <coughs> Make me hurt you. <coughs> I'll break okay. your legs. Lyndon, do you feel comfortable staying here for two days? I mean, I'd feel more comfortable with you, Clover, protecting you. And That's sweet, but you've protected me for the past 19 years. I think I can take a turn. Uh, I mean, I, I just... Don't need to protect me. I've got Felix. Felix. Wherever he is, I actually have you seen Felix? Um, your your pint sized friend uh, actually departed er early this morning, and um, he left this for me to to pass on to all of you. He left that weird. Holds out a uh, size a friend. Paper. It's a little uh, reductive, don't you think? I mean, he's only a little bit shorter than me. I figured it was. And insulting. Um, I'll take the note and okay. open it up. Um, as you open the note and read it, um, in typical Felix fashion, there is a, almost scribblings of of uh, train of thought writing as he tries to explain his, what's he what he's thinking in the moment. He's, uh, the numbers the numbers are erratic. I saw things when I was unconscious. I 
I don't. I need to figure it out. Uh, I I'll I'll get back to you. Uh, I'm going to the library, and that's the library. Okay. Um, it just says he's going to the library. I don't know why he chose today to just go to a library. He didn't even say which library he was going to, but yeah. I never understand when he's talking about the numbers either. That doesn't really help. It's weird. It just doesn't seem like something he would usually go. You know, like just leave me here. But I mean, I guess he'll find us. Um, as you all are having this discussion, the doors behind you burst open and immediately the first thing you see is just shocking pink hair oh. and <laughs> uh wendy bursts through the doors just her hair is just a mess like it's tied up a little bit but it's just there's strands of it down in front of her uh her eyes are bloodshot and you see just str streaks and streaks of tears dried up on her face we do not have time for this today, Wendy. Oh my god. Lindy Poo, are you, you okay? Have my brother like that. I'm she actively just... gonna put myself between her and Lyndon. She runs and Hello. goes to push you and wrap herself around Lyndon. No. She could certainly try. Uh not gonna let it happen. Okay. Um uh I'm going to say one of you, whoever you decide, roll a strength check at advantage because everyone's kind of like standing there. Oh, my God. I oh shit. Ne strength. Never mind. She rolled a natural one. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, no. <laughs> so. That's as, a natural 20. <laughs> as she's running and just slams into the wall of Gormrog, she kind of looks up at you. I need to see. If, I felt when he died, I couldn't sense him, but then I suddenly sensed him back. Please get out of my way. I need my Lindy Poo. He's not your Lindy Poo. How did you know he was here? I have ways of knowing things. I just get, get out you know, of my way. How did you know that he... Go ahead, Finnick. No. You said you yeah. felt when he left and came back? What? What does it matter? Just let me see him. No. You have to understand how weird this sounds. H hear right? me out. No. You know how dangerous it would be if someone, um, I don't know, maybe the people who killed him followed you here and found him? You're putting no. him in so much danger. No one's following me. How do you know? How do you know? What would they, why would they have to follow me? Let me see my Linden. Hey, I learned a little Zemnian. Nine. Um, I'm going to try something new. Um, I'm going to cast Suggestion okay. on Wendy. Nice. And she needs to make a Wisdom saving throw. Um, this is a charm, correct? Yes. Uh, that is a 10. Okay. So, seeing her like this, I'm just like, Wendy, you should relax and head back to the spell ward. On a failed save, it pursues the course of action you described to the best of its ability. The suggested course of action continues for the entire duration. Okay. So, as you do this, let me change the music. Sorry, this is inappropriate for the setting. Um, okay. So, just like so this sprinkle of magic emits from my hands and my voice as I say this. 
Okay. Um, you, Gormrog, you being the first one up up front, you see her eyes kind of flash with a little bit of magic from some external source. And her gaze slackens a bit. And she kind of, well, like, just, Linden, when I'm going to head back, but come see me when you're better. And she turns. Goodbye, and Wendy. She turns and begins to make her way out of the temple. You now look at the uh, people in armor and say, do not allow her back into this establishment ever again. Finnick, what was that? Why did she All listen right. to you? I don't know what else to say other than magic? It's really I know cool. how we feel about her, how Lyndon feels about her, and again, it's just getting weird and obsessive. Yeah, she's mm-hmm. new. Is she tracking us? Are you sure she, uh, anybody she grabs the blood of? Oh, so me. Great. Yeah, really weird. Said she knows things about them, so not surprised. Great. Can I kill her yet? If you don't, she joins the mirror. I mean, I'd kind of pay to see that one. <laughs> Tristan, are you joining us? Someone needs to die. Yeah, let's do it. For yeah. the record, you're not talking about yourself, right? Gives Gordon. No. Okay. Well, right, cool. I'm dead. I can't kill everyone else. All right, cool. Just clearing that up. Jason's very, very. Jason's very. From everything else happening, he's there. He's very absent. Uh, Don, your audio is kind of cutting out for me. I don't know if it's for the way for everyone. Um, as you so, tell, as you tell the uh, individual dressed in in the silver armor. The, uh, they look at you and, um, well, security detail is not particularly our form of purpose here, but I will make sure to let the temple priests know. Health, safety, protection, this is the sort of thing your temple provides to the individuals in your care, yes? Uh, yes, but as... No, 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 no as, buts. As wing commander, it's not doesn't necessarily fall into my purview to provide security for Don't care. hospital. That man individual. cannot be in the same building as her because she is a threat to him. She's okay. not allowed in here while he is here. That is part of your job. I'll let them know. Thank you. Um. Well, we need to. Uh, is there anything else we can provide for you in the the meantime? Mm, you got any food? Of course. Which we have a. Uh, I can prepare some food for all of you. I'm gonna look to everybody else and be like, "Eh, eh." <laughs> I don't have much of an appetite, but go for it. Yeah, we can oh, take some stuff for the road. I'm cool with that. Uh, so you'd like some things to to take? Uh, sure, I'll I will uh, I'll have someone bring up a, a small package for everyone. Uh, for Any, the um, celery? Uh, I I believe I, I believe we do. Celery. Thank celery. You. Sure. I th- I think I think we uh, have some of that in the kitchen. Thanks. Uh, any other specific requests? Any other dietary restrictions we should be aware of? Meat. Meat. Okay. Um, very well. Uh, I'll let I'll let one of the uh, someone know, and they'll bring up a package for you shortly. Bring the goodie bag. Um, as they uh, as the dwarf turns, 
to depart. You he kind of puts a hand on the back of the half elf, and uh, Clover, you would hear this with your passive perception. Um, they begin to talk about ramping up uh, defenses for the temple in light of recent events, and um, they talk about bringing in more of the Platinum Guard court to the temple. But a few moments pass. Uh, eventually, uh, a um, the the water ganasi that you have dealt with the day before uh, appears with a small package for all of you inside, containing some dry meats, some fresh fruits, and some some vegetables. Uh, celery being one of the things that is inside the package. Her name was Ocean Tide Rider. Uh, yep, Ocean Tide Rider. Mm -hmm. I got notes. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, what thank you, you very like much. Oh, cool. um, well, uh, if Felix comes back here. Can you just let him know that we went back into town? I will. I will let him know. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And he can always send the uh, the glitchy, glowy, floaty thing to find us too. Yeah. He'll be all right. And he can contact us if he's not. Tristan. You wanted to see Marie Lins? That's when he finally stands up. Yes. Yes, I do. Go check out how bad it is. See what we can do. And he... He walks, kind of like, past everyone, not ignoring them, like not acknowledging them, but not fully ignoring them, and goes to Gorfog before he walks by everybody and takes the back of his head and puts it to his forehead. Doesn't say anything. And then doesn't walk away, just walks ahead towards the direction. I'm going to skip up next to you and be like, I know things are a little weird right now, but it's good <clears throat> to see you again. It feels a lot better to not be alone right now. Glad to have you back, and I want to give you a high five. He puts the you know, the, 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 the soft hand up and, and takes it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, as you all open the door to the temple, and the outside kind of washes through, um, the weather is a little crisp for the air, but um, you feel heat in despite the weather, as there are just hordes of people moving through the street. Um, Instantly looking out, you see three pillars of smoke. Uh, two from your direction, you see two of them to the northwest, and you see one to the northeast. Uh, you hear people shouting and grumbling and just anger swelling through the crowd. And I need to switch the music yet again. I need a better way to do this. But as you exit on the street, there's these crowds of people moving through. You see hammers and hatchets and pitchforks in hand. And they're kind of working their way through the district. Uh, anger on their voices, they shout out. Death to the clasp! Bring them down! Enough! 
happening? So confused. I'm going to run up to one of them and ask them what's happening. <laughs> you, uh, you run up and grab someone as they walk by, and uh, this middle-aged woman, she kind of turns and looks at you. Oh, you, you didn't hear. The class blew up three buildings last night. No, 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 that wasn't the clasp. That was, uh, that was the other, the other gang. There's no other gangs in West Yeah, Rome. no, there is. Gormrog, yeah. who are the enemies? The Myriad. Yeah, no, it wasn't the clasp, it was the Myriad. They, they did it. They said they were clasp. Well, what were the three buildings clasp. hit? Uh, Marie Lynn's, some restaurant over in the market ward um the uh the rabid pantheon some shop and uh, an apartment building in the residential district you have to spread the word it's the myriad doing this well do you have any proof i promise you can i roll a persuasion tech go ahead i it's promise like, uh... you, if it was the class they wouldn't have admitted it Um, it was a dirty 20 persuasion. I mean, it's certainly strange that whoever that was would claim it, but there's flyers everywhere, there's... Flyers? Flyers for what? They pull out a, a, like this letter with just, uh, you've been warned with the class symbol on the center of it. Come on, do you believe this? What else do we have to go on? There's six people dead. Just in that apartment building alone, two are children. How many times has the clasp helped you in this town? Just because they used to help us doesn't mean that they got, haven't gotten greedy. And... This event aside, was was something happening that made you think that uh, that was the case? Well, use crime, your head. Crime's been rampant. Uh huh. From home. Guards are, can't be trusted anymore. They're all on the take. By whom? You think the clasp is the only group of less than upstanding individuals? When was the last time you paid the tax, man? <sighs> kind of waves a hand at you and begins to make her way back into the crowd. Wait, listen. I understand you're mad at the class, but also don't forget the name the Myriad. Because if things keep happening after you guys defeat the class, that's who you're going to need to worry about. She kind of looks at you and gives a little nod. But um, you, as she makes her way off, you hear the crowd kind of swelling with anger and rage. Uh, and they, they're just, they're, they're starting to complain about everything. The corruption in the government, the guards being on the take, like it's all kind of swelled into this flashpoint moment. Um, the crowd's going to get ugly. The, um, yeah. but yeah. Uh, I would say all of you roll intelligence check. All of you that are from Western roll an intelligence check. Or have been in West Virginia all the time. 19. Okay. Okay. Um, so, Eight. Gormrug, you kind of get a sense the oh, way the what? crowd's moving, they might be heading towards the jumping jackal. And do they know where the clasp is? Is that what they're headed? The Myriad has been watching the clasp forever. I'm sure that... The, How does the, the crowd know? These people. We don't know all of them. They could be hidden. We could have just been talking to one for all we know. Love, is there a way out of the jumping jackal from the back? Do you know? Do you remember? Uh, how, how would I know that? You were the only one who was there that was would have paid attention to that. Um, Felix might have. He was. He's not here. Um, Shit. We can hurry there. 
You think we can beat the crowd there? Oh. No. <laughs> um. They're going to set the place on fire. Whatever we're going to do, we got to hurry because they're moving quick. I, oh, we, we, we should go. Right. I'm in. Okay. Anyone Look. else? Tristan, you cool I, I with putting go. off the trip to Marie Lynn's for just a little while longer? Yes. For a little while longer. Whisper. Yeah. What's on your mind? I, I'm confused. And there's a lot of yelling. So I'll just, I'm going to join wherever we go. I don't know what to do next. Yeah, it's very loud. There's a lot of people yelling, and they're going to hurt the wrong people. Mm -hmm. We got to help those people. Let's go. To the jumping jackal. Um, okay. Uh, so what are you guys trying to beeline it there, like avoiding the crowd? You're going to like uh, meld into the crowd and kind of follow them along? What's the plan? Um, would we know, or I suppose only Gormog or Tristan would know, but the, would there be a way that's quicker than the way the crowd is taking? At least I would, directly through them. I would say we're not going to hurt the people. Tristan and Gormog, go ahead and roll one more intelligence check to see if you would know of like a, a shortcut there. Ooh, seven. No. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you are unaware of any shortcuts to the jumping jackal. No, we we gotta just work our way through the crowd. Would I like uh uh I was asked would I know if there was a back entrance somehow? Go ahead and roll a perception check in retrospect for me. I wouldn't. I wouldn't know. <laughs> no. It was a four. <laughs> okay. We're doing great tonight, guys. <laughs> don't know. Um, yeah. Okay. All right, so you guys day. kind of meld into the crowd here and begin to try and, like, force your way up through the crowd. Um, there is just... As you're making your way through, you could just anger and rage, and it almost, almost sinks into you. Finnick, there is just... On your psyche, you feel the anger coming in from all, all, all sides. It's not overwhelming your brain. You're able to kind of shut it out a little bit, but you could you sense the rage throughout this cr crowd as they are making their way up. Okay, and like, I just have a general question about the crowd. Like, how big are we talking? Like, uh, The one you're in right now is probably about 50 to 75 people. Holy. Damn. Wreck mob. Damn. Okay. Okay. And can we tell if there's like more people, I guess, ahead or like behind? Um, uh, I would say you could roll a perception check at disadvantage to see if you hear or see anyone outside of this group. I mean, might as well. I'll try. No. Absolutely not. That is a two. <laughs> Wait. Plus one, so a three. <laughs> ah, that, that's just what you needed. <laughs> Changes everything. <laughs> um, okay, so as you're kind of making your way through this group, uh, I'm assuming you kind of like try and force your way up to the front. So yeah, yeah. Uh, let's say as a kind of a group check here, everyone roll perception checks to keep in track of each other in the crowd. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, oh, no. 15. It's going to be a group pass or fail, because... Yeah. Okay, like, 30, 20. 20. Okay. 14. Okay, 12, 14. Finnick? <laughs> oh, no! 16. I was using the wrong... I was using Persuasion Modifier. Okay. <laughs> Finnick, hey. what'd you roll? Six, Tristan? 30, 20. Okay. All right. 
Uh, as you kind of, uh, as you're all forcing your way up to the front of this, just this crowd, which is growing as you're, as you're moving towards the jumping jacko, uh, Finnick kind of starts to get lagged, distracted and pulled off to the side, but you all collectively kind of grab her and bring her back in and you're able to make your way up to the front of the group ahead, getting ahead of them just, just slightly as you pull out of the temple ward. And into the market ward. You're about 10 blocks away from the jumping jackal at this point. What's the plan? I I mean, I have another spell I could try, but I don't know how well magic is going to work through it. Do what? It, it's just sort of like calming people down, I guess. I, I but I don't know if it'll get all of them. Does anyone have a way that to warn them, or uh, could we do a distraction for the crowd? There's the crowd is big. Sure, we could. Someone could distract while others go inside, maybe. I mean, who's good at distractions? Mm-hmm. While we're all just like discussing this, can I do um? Can I? Ch- I want to look around and see if I see the Frogman. Okay, go ahead and roll a perception check for me. While she's doing that, is Marie Lynn's in view of where we are or no? Um, I would say if you want to try and make a perception check as you pass the block that it's on, that would okay. that would be okay. It was an eighteen. Okay. Um. I would say with an 18, you do not see any flashes of of the frogman on the roof or in the crowd. Uh, You do see several individuals on the roof, on the rooftops, making their way in different directions, though. I'm going to just, I mean, if. I would like, guys, I think that we should start warning people in the crowds to go make sure that their wives and children are safe, because I see people on the roofs, and I don't think the explosions are done yet. I think that this is a distraction. It's a good idea. Yeah, we might as well. Um... Start running through the crowds and start pointing at the people on the roofs and telling people to go make sure that their families are out of their homes. I'm just going to start screaming, it's a distraction! They're attacking everywhere else! Um, okay, uh, go ahead and both of you roll persuasion checks for me. 17. Okay. Ooh, uh, 16. Okay, as you start pointing at the people on the roofs running uh, uh, in different directions, they, they look up. Oh, they're, they're trying to escape! Get them! And they, you see people starting to try and scale buildings to very little effect. And you see some of the crowds start to dash off in different directions down alleyways. And some of them, you presume, uh, heading back to their own house. Um, so you thin the crowd out, probably about 40 people. So you're this crowd's down to like 30 people. As I'm like screaming, go save your families. I'm also like intermittently saying it's the myriad. Like, I don't care if anyone's listening to me or not, but I'm just going to scream that regardless. Okay. That that okay. Out there. okay. Um, I'll say based off that role, um, the, the, the people around you are certainly questioning the legitimacy of what you're saying and what they know and like a lot of them have never even heard of the myriad yes. so Totes. um but you do see a few people like look at you with like a, a questioning look and you see confusion if you on a few people's faces you get the sense like you may be convincing a few people that this might not be the class but cool it's also just adding a lot of chaos to it already yeah situation. i'm not trying to convince anyone i'm just trying to get the name out there right uh. Fair enough. Uh, Tristan, what'd you roll for your perception check? I'm sorry. 
18. Okay. Um, as you glance on the block, you see the remnants of Marie Lynn's. The entire second and third floor are just destroyed and collapsed in on the first floor. Um, in front of it, you see a few uh, of the, the local guard there kind of like shifting through the rubble uh, and setting up like a defensive perimeter. Uh, you also see another large crowd making their way up another road. You catch a glimpse of another crowd moving in the same direction as yours. Um, how far are we from the jumping jackal at this point? Uh, you're about five blocks out. And it's at this point you see another massive crowd ahead of you circling, already filling up some of the block towards you. So with everything happening, Justin notices that for seeing it for the first time. And he just stands there and the sword just drops out of his hands and he's just void of what's happening. People running past him, moving, brushing his shoulder, hitting, almost knocking him over to him, not caring, just staring. And tears, not drip, torrential downpour, but tears and just staring and just being in a void of his own tunnel vision thought. Staring. Hey, hey, hey. I'm, I'm going to start smacking him on the chest. I'm I'm just making a beeline for the jumping jackal at this point. And Seeing I more see you crowds. do that and follow you. Continuing to yell at people. I to like this. yelling back, it's like, we don't have time to do this. We gotta go. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna pick up his sword and hand it to him. Look at me. Look at me. Use it. It hurts. This was our home. This was everything we had since leaving the the tribe. This is everything for us. We lost it. Use it. Don't let it consume you. Consume it and use it. Okay. I'm going to put my forehead against his and I'm going to say, let's go. And I'm going to make off for the jumping jackal too. All right. As you all kind of round that last little bit and you're met by another crowd, you can see the jumping jackal off in the distance, but between where you are and the jumping jackal, there's maybe 2,000 people as there's just this swelling of anger and rage. Um, you see, as you pass and come up on this location, uh, the body of a uh, several bodies of individuals in silver and blue armor just strewn onto the sides of, of the street as it looks like a few of the uh, planes guards tried to um, shield the planes guards tried to stop this mob and were quickly dispatched and shoved to the sides. They were killed by the mob? It would seem that, that way. Still like to continue pointing to rooftops and telling people to go save their families. Okay. Um, as you do that, a few people start peel off and begin to make their way. Again, the crowd, some of the crowd tries to get to the rooftops to, you know, uh, stop these people from running. Yeah. Um, but as you all kind of, what, what's, how close do you want to get to the jumping jackal at this point? I mean, it's not like we're going to warn them at this point. They know. Right. What else can we do? What if there are bombs in the jackal? There are probably bombs everywhere. That's the point. But if they all blame the clasp and then they go to the clasp and then the clasp explodes, that's more negative propaganda against the, the clasp. As you say that, uh, Clover and Whisper, you're the first to notice the short, bluish figure on top of the jumping jackal. I'm gonna kill him. 
Um, how how far away am I? Uh, from here, probably twenty five hundred feet. I want to hundred feet. I want to yeah. keep running towards the jumping jackal. Now I'm just running towards at full speed. Okay, you start to push your way through the crowd. Um, um yeah, no, go ahead. Uh, as you're doing that, Clover, the you he he kind of stands up. Oi! You think you can come on the clasp like this? We warned you all. And this is what you get. That's the myriad. He kind of raises his hand up. Drops it. And I need all of you to roll dexterity saving throws. Saving throws. God, again. Oh, son of a... 19. 14. 24. Seven. You, how do you get a one? What's your modifier? <laughs> three. It's a, it's te- it's two. It's technically a three, but it's a nat one. <laughs> Plus two. Okay. You need to get better dice. So I need my own dice. All I'm right. using D and Beyond, and it's garbage. <laughs> okay. So all of you, if you rolled above a fourteen, you take half damage. Uh. You take, those of you that rolled under a 14, math is hard, guys. Uh, you, you take 14 fire damage Ooh. as just in this, there's the jumping jackal and then the three buildings on the opposite side of the block, the second floor on all of them explode outwards, just showering the crowd in fire, ex- fire and uh, burnt timbers and explosion. Um, I am I, determined to keep my eye on the frogman. Okay. Um, I roll the fourteen. So do I still take half damage? Yeah. So what would, would it be? Seven, eight. Yeah. Seven. seven. Um. The the crowd closest to these buildings is just decimated. They are buried in rubble. You hear screaming. You hear uh, voices crying out underneath. Um, Clover, remind me, do you have uh, Uncanny Dodge yet or ev- Evasion? I forget which one it is. Will I you take no damage? I don't have that yet. I think okay. that's level seven. Okay, I wasn't sure. Um, yeah. But uh, Clover, go ahead and roll a perception check for me as you try and keep eyes on the frog. 22. Okay. You see him as the explosion goes off. He kind of starts to step back from the edge of the the building, holds up a large sign of the clasp, and kind of just throws it out onto the group. You've yeah, been I'd warned. Like, I'd how like far to, away is he? How, how far away now? Uh, uh, I would say for you, Clover, he's probably about two thousand feet from you. That's so far. <laughs> and you're moving through a large crowd of people. Yeah, I know. Um, I just want to keep going after him until... But with these explosions, people are now starting to run and try and clear the streets. Yeah. Um, Can we notice what she's looking at or what she's trying to... Oh, follow? you all see him. You all see the, the grong on top of the building. Like, they, they, they shouted out and made themselves known. might point it out, but... They shouted out. Like, they made themselves known. They were mm-hmm. hollering. Um, I'm staying with the rogue. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't know what else we can do at this point. No. She's found the dude. I'm going to kill him. That, it's, it's that simple. It's... Beeline. Agreed. Followed. Okay. Uh, the Grung is going to turn and attempt to run. Uh, what, what's the plan? Like, I, um, what do you guys want to do to try and close the gap? For you guys at this point, I'm going to say... 1,700 feet. Um, I don't know if this works outside of combat, but can I get extra speed using rabbit hop? I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I yeah can? you can do whatever you want. Yeah, that's fine with me. Cool. I am, I am leaping. Um, I am going to cast 
expeditious retreat. Um, can I cast that on other people? I think so. Because it'll say in the spell. Um, I guess it just says the spell allows you to move at an incredible pace. So it should say under casting whether or not it's self. Yeah, it's self. Yeah, so. and it's just you. Damn. Thank you. Okay. I'll so still all... cast expeditious retreat, so we can move, so I can move quick, at okay. least to keep up with those two. Can I hop on your back? Oh, we, am I ahead of her still? Yeah, you're ahead yeah. of her. Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> uh, I got an eighty foot uh, speed if I'm running and dashing, so uh, I'm just gonna f- book it um, yeah. if I can get to the roof via fallen rubble uh, i'll I'll do what i have to, to kind of ninja my way up there but um mainly just running as hard and fast as i can if yeah. any of the people pass me as they are running i would like to hop onto one of their backs <laughs> just okay. sort of bling, bling, bling. <laughs> uh, i would say the rubble is behind you because it was the building's opposite the jumping jackal so it's to get up, like you would, you could do it, but you're going to be going a little bit backwards to go forwards. Is that what you want to do? No. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say everyone roll dexterity checks as we try and navigate our way through the crowd and navigate our way through and try and get up towards the ground. That was a uh, 21. I love Eight. that. 19. <laughs> 19. 15. 10. Okay. Uh, as a group, you succeeded. So you all kind of start pushing your way through the crowd, making your way through, shoving people out of the way, tripping over a f- the occasional downed body. But Clover, with your passive perception, you're able to keep track of the grung on the rooftops as he starts to turn to run in the opposite direction. You see him hop across to one other building and then hop across to the next building. But you're able to keep track of him and kind of close the distance. Uh, Anyone want to do anything in particular as we as we move on to the next round here? Um, as soon as I'm within range, I want to shoot him with my um. I want to stop and and shoot him with my uh, short bow. What's the range on it? Three fifty, I think. Three fifty. Okay. Uh, you got. I would say three more successes on these dex checks before you're yeah. within range of that. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> guys. I know we really need to go shopping. <laughs> I need a better weapon. And no matter where they go, Tristan's just blood lusting, rushing with okay. them. Whoever uh, they're right. shooting. If no one wants to do anything in particular, everyone roll dexterity checks again. Oh. 30, 20. 30, 20. 13. 19. Uh, 9. Okay. This damage sucks, guys. <laughs> that was me doing right. some myself. As a group, you still succeed. So it's right. you continue on pushing your way through. You kind of get towards uh, a bit of an alleyway now. Clover, uh, you see. Let me actually. Let me. Oh, he rolled shit on his stealth. Um, you see the flashes of blue moving back and forth, but you're able to keep track of them. Uh, you all are now kind of bottlenecked into this alleyway as you kind of start to close the distance on him. What does you got? What do you all want to do? Keep at it. Yeah, I'm still going. Okay. Booking. Yep. No one wants to go up. Just staying in the alleys. I'm. Is it possible to go up right now? Um, some of you. Yeah, it would be easy enough to for you to scale, especially Clover with her her rabbit jump. She would have a pretty easy. Time getting I'm up assuming there. we all know who we're. Are we following the who she's chasing? We all ha- no, have a significant I mean, icon we're chasing. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I'm gonna keep a middle line between everyone, just going right for that person. I've been thinking about who's around, just going as my fastest route right to him. He's a blue frog. He he's, he stands out. Yeah. I'm gonna try and climb. Okay. Go ahead and roll either an athletics or an acrobatics check. I would also like to do that. Okay. What do you want to do, Clover? No, I, I think I'm going to try to get up to the rooftop, um, and I would like to do, like, a, since we're in an alleyway, like a hop, 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 
All right. Uh, go ahead and roll. I'm going to say with uh, advantage because of your uh, your bunny feature. Awesome. I got yeah. a 10. Okay. 15. Uh, 23. God okay. damn. Clover and Gormrog, you make it up no issue. Whisper, you try and uh, get up there, but you're unable to scale the wall in this space. Oh. Well, I'm running straight hey, through. Right. I'm just going to try and grab Whisper right. and pull her along. Close to not making or coming to where I'm coming faster. What? Never mind. <laughs> Move forward. Okay. Uh, everyone roll dexterity checks for the next next leg of this. Sixteen. Twenty-one. Six. Seven. Ooh. Guys. I have disadvantage, guys. I still have a level of exhaustion. <laughs> Fair enough. What'd you, what'd you roll, Tristan? Tristan, what'd you roll? Twenty-one. Gormrock? Uh thirteen. Clover? Sixteen. Okay. Uh, actually, the the scaling of the wall kind of slows you down a bit, and the 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 grung is able to get a little bit of distance on all of you. Um, Clover, go ahead and roll a perception check as they try and duck down and escape. Uh, eighteen. Okay, you are. They are. They kind of duck down on the side of the building. You see them slide across some of the tiles to try and hug the side and get tight before leaping over and dodging behind a chimney stack, but you are able to track them. Okay, I'm yelling down to my alleyway friends what's happening. Okay. Uh, so, you all keep track. I need uh, one more dexterity check here, everyone, to try and catch up to the grung. I got two good ones. This one's going to be garbage. I'm never Not kissing 20. my... <laughs> um, 12. Seven. <laughs> 17. 12, 17, natural 20, I heard? Yeah. Seven. Oh, 21. <laughs> Four. <laughs> <laughs> they rolled a natural 20 as well. So oh, they, con them. <laughs> they continue to gain a little bit of distance from you all now and dodge and jump behind another building. Clover, go ahead and roll another perception check as they try to stealth. I was another 18. All right, you're able to keep track on them as they kind of their foot slips on a, the side of a building as they try and duck down and uh, grab underneath, but they're not able to grab and they kind of. We lost the music. Oh, thing. Where's the? Ooh. Two seconds, guys. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, hello. Hello. Here we go. Cat break. So, um, they kind of try and uh, grab a ledge, but they they miss it and and just are able to recover, but they're unable to hide. So oh. I need another dexterity check from everyone. Ooh, they rolled good. Maybe stuff three. Me too. Thank you. Thirty twenty. Thirty twenty. Nineteen. Okay. Oh yeah. And Okay. All right. Success. You are able to gain a little bit of ground here. You're about one good roll win off to get it within range, Clover. Go ahead and roll another perception check as they attempt to hide. 22. Oh, they rolled really well. And they, if it wasn't for your keen eyes keeping track of them, you would have lost them here. Oh, my gosh. As they kind of jump down, bank, bank, bank off a pair of buildings and attempt to slide in to a window, but they see that you notice them, and they continue on with the, the chase. Uh, all right, another dexterity check, everyone. Ooh. Oh, my God. How all close right. are we? Can she shoot him yet? You're, this, if you guys beat, win this one, you will be, she will be within range. Natural 20. Fucking one in the same game in oh. one run. Oh, you're not a fire. Don't say one. Say three or whatever. Three. Fine. Three. <laughs> Two natural, natural ones. one, so three. <laughs> seven. A seven, two natural ones, a natural Wait, 20. Nat ones? I got a nat one. Oh, geez. What'd you roll, Clover? A 17. Oh. 
All right. <sighs> they rolled really shitty too. But with two natural ones, no distance is closed in on this one. Yeah. Don't another, shake your head. Okay. Another, shake your head, Burma. <laughs> You're good. Your head. Another perception I'm not check. shaking my head at you. I'm shaking my head at this freaking frog. frog. Keep your head <laughs> in the game, guys. We're almost there. Frog's Hungry bitch. for frog legs. <laughs> That's a 13 plus 3, 16. Okay. Uh, Clover, what'd you roll on your perception check first? 17. Okay, you are able to keep track of them. All right. Sorry, guys. One more dexterity check. Is that not what we just rolled? Well, she rolled a perception check. Oh. Can, can I keep the 16? Yeah, if you <laughs> rolled it, that's fine. Eight. Twelve. Sixteen. No, don't say it. Natural one plus get two rid of those three. Dice. <laughs> Just get rid of those dice. Clearly. Okay. Eventually I'm just gonna trip and fall <laughs> flat on my fucking face. <laughs> With that. Clover. They come within range. Oh, it's shooting my crossbow. A short, short bow. Okay, go ahead and roll your attack. 15 plus 5. A dirty 20 to hit. That hits. God damn. How close is he? Uh, 300 feet out. Oh, I can hit him too. Uh, did you roll? It's That's your max range, right, Clover? Yeah, oh, so I don't get advantage, right? Right, yeah, so it's a straight roll. Okay. Oh, I, I only um, rolled a straight roll, so that's fine. Okay, um, cool. But I don't get sneak attack, so that super sucks. Um, <laughs> eight. Okay, eight points of damage. They can bleed. Uh, you see How far the. Are we? You said like 300? 300, 300 years ago? yeah. So as the arrow kind of pierces against their skin, they quick turn. And fire off three uh, arrows towards you, Clover. First one is a 19 to hit. Second one is a 24 to hit. Okay. And the third one is a natural one. Okay. So the first one does... It's not hit because I used shield. So only one hits. Okay. So you take... Nine piercing damage and two poison damage as the arrow pierces into your shoulder. Okay. Um, with that, they're going to turn and keep running. They're going to use uh, the dash action on their turn. And with that, unless anyone else wanted to do anything on this free round. I want to try and hit him. Okay. What do you want to do? Mm -hmm. I see. I saw Clover pull out her bow, and I grab my crossbow and try to hit. What's the max range on your crossbow? Three twenty. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll. It's at disadvantage on the attack. Yeah. Yep. Dang four. Is it a disadvantage, or because it's an opportunity attack where you would normally get advantage? Is it just a straight? This roll? is this... get advantage. But it's it's you would get advantage normally for an opportunity attack, but since it's long range, you normally get a disadvantage, so they just cancel each other out. There's no opportunity attack with this, um, because okay. he's not he's not leaving your range. Uh, your uh, that opportunity attack is only from leaving your melee range. Um, uh, not uh, it doesn't matter. It's fine. I missed um, it's a four. Yeah. Okay. All right. And so with that, we are going to take our break as it is already 1030. It's so weird yet. for me because I look at the every, I look at the time I keep forgetting I'm an hour behind. So I keep thinking we're still early. <laughs> all right. We're going to take our break. And when we get back, we'll all roll initiative and get into this combat. Yeah, See you guys soon. Damn. I'm Jacqueline Wilmot, Director of Volunteer and Community Engagement at the Phoenix. We're on a mission to help as many people as we can. I'm blown away 
honestly, by the impact our volunteers are having across the country. The Phoenix is yoga, it's art, it's hiking, it's music. So there's a lot of really exciting things happening at the Phoenix. Now, because of our virtual volunteer platform, we can take Phoenix anywhere. All they have to do is pick up that volunteer flag and it's started. The people, they tend to come to the Phoenix because they get something out of it, you know? There's something genuine about that. And then, you know, along the way, they realize, I can give back. What's so unique about volunteering with the Phoenix is that you can just come as you are and we will give you the, the tools and the training to be successful. I became a volunteer with the Phoenix so that I could give back, even if it's just a little bit of what they've given me. One of my most favorite things about volunteering is meeting people, connecting. I've made friends that I will have for a lifetime. So it's been a dream of mine to be able to bring fitness or physical activities um, to the sober community here in Long Beach. And so to hear that the Phoenix was already here and doing that was super exciting for me. My service to others has been, like, played a major role in my personal recovery. So I like that the Phoenix lets me combine an activity and some service. I also really like riding my bike, so hand in hand, they go together. Oh, um, I love the Phoenix. I don't know. It's just. The classes have um, really helped me come out of my shell a little bit. I have my confidence back, which I didn't have even though I got clean from drugs and alcohol. I feel like my life is taking off and everybody at the Phoenix is helping me do that. Once Phoenix has helped you rise from the ashes, there's this sort of natural response where you want to do that for other people. And, and the beauty of that is as soon as they find that strength and fortitude in their recovery, they're reaching back for the next person. And if we did that across the country, imagine how many lives could be touched. So join us in this movement. Whether you are in recovery or an ally, you have something special to offer. Whether you are looking to lead events or support events, you already have everything you need to bring the Phoenix alive in your community. Get started today. We can't wait to make a difference alongside you.
Jacqueline Wilmot, Director of Volunteer and Community Engagement at the Phoenix. We're on a mission to help as many people as we can. I'm blown away, honestly, by the impact our volunteers are having across the country. The Phoenix is yoga, it's art, it's hiking, it's music. So there's a lot of really exciting things happening at the Phoenix. Now, because of our virtual volunteer platform, we can take Phoenix anywhere. All they have to do is pick up that volunteer flag and it's started. The people, they tend to come to the Phoenix because they get something out of it, you know? There's something genuine about that. And then, you know, along the way, they realize I can give back. What's so unique about volunteering with the Phoenix is that you can just come as you are and we will give you the, the tools and the training to be successful. I became a volunteer with the Phoenix so that I could give back, even if it's just a little bit of what they've given me. It's one of my most favorite things about volunteering is meeting people, connecting. I've made friends that I will have for a lifetime. So it's been a dream of mine to be able to bring fitness or physical activities um, to the sober community here in Long Beach. And so to hear that the Phoenix was already here and doing that was super exciting for me. My service to others has been like played a major role in my personal recovery. So I like that the Phoenix lets me combine an activity and some service. I also really like riding my bike. So hand in hand, they go together. Um, I love the Phoenix. I don't know. It's just. The classes have um, really helped me come out of my shell a little bit. I have my confidence back, which I didn't have even though I got clean from drugs and alcohol. I feel like my life is taking off and everybody at the Phoenix is helping me do that. Once Phoenix has helped you rise from the ashes, there's this sort of natural response where you want to do that for other people. And, and the beauty of that is as soon as they find that strength and fortitude in their recovery, they're reaching back for the next person. And if we did that across the country, imagine how many lives could be touched. So join us in this movement. Whether you are in recovery or an ally, you have something special to offer. Whether you are looking to lead events or support events, you already have everything you need to bring the Phoenix alive in your community. Get started today. We can't wait to make a difference alongside you. And we are back. Just so everyone can see, so there's no confusion. I don't have a ton of minis, uh, terrain minis, and I don't can't find any fucking dry erase markers right now. Uh, these two sides are rooftops. This is an alleyway, and it's not to scale, but the enemy is out here. Um, doing our best here, folks. <laughs> uh, with that, I need all of you to roll initiative. Yeah. Oh no. Do you consider 15 the initiative and ability check? I Would I have disadvantage is, yeah. on that? Yeah, I believe it's considered an ability check. What was a skill? Is a skill check? I don't work. Skills Not that. are abilities, aren't they? What, initiative? And initiative has a modifier, right? What was that? I'm just yeah, asking some... if I would roll disadvantage on this or not. Oh. It would say on D&D Beyond whether or not you rolled with disadvantage on the front page. Under Abilities, Saves, and Senses, it is at the top in the middle. Well, because of the exhaustion level. If you've clicked that you are exhausted under uh, just... the uh, Conditions tab, also on the front page, uh, you can set what level. Don't say anything about initiative. I'm pretty sure initiative is just initiative. I don't think it counts. Anyways, don't roll with a disadvantage for right now. We'll figure it out later. <laughs> so let me get an. I can't throw my iPad. Uh, okay. Darting. Okay. Pick that up. All right. 25 to 20. Okay. Uh, Gemini Cricket. 20 to 15. 18. 15. Ooh. 15. 
What? Uh, Clover, what'd you roll? 18. What'd you roll, Tristan? 15. What'd you roll, Gormorog? 15. Uh, I'm I got assuming... 18. Okay. Uh, I'm assuming Clover is faster, uh, higher dex than Whisper? Uh, and... I don't know. Plus three. Yeah, definitely. And, and I'm assuming Gormrog has a higher dex than Tristan? Uh, I plus also two. have a plus three. Okay. And Finnick taking up the rear? With a ten. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, with that, the Grung is going to go first. Oh, no. oh, they are going to shoot three arrows at you again, Clover, because you hit them. That first one is a 23. Jesus. Second one's a 24. Uh, that's a, sorry. That's a I'm cop. Sorry. And that's a natural 20 on that third one. A natural 20? Okay, guys, I'm pretty sure I'm dead, so. Okay, first, uh, I'll do the first one. That is uh, five, six, not, uh, that is eight piercing damage. And six poison. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I read the wrong. No, I didn't read the wrong one. Okay. So eight piercing and six poison. Uh, the second one is six piercing and. Okay, I'm unconscious. Okay. Uh, and their third one, which is the natural 20. Uh, th that automatically gives you one death yes. save. It is not two because it is not a melee attack. So, Clover, you feel thum, 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 three arrows just sink into you, and you, you feel the poison boom, pulse through your body as your entire, you feel the limbs become heavy, and everything starts to blacken around you, and you just face plant down onto the cold tile roof. Okay. Um, with that, they're going to use their bonus action to attempt to hide. Okay. Um, they are pretty well hidden. Um, that's a 26. Okay. All right. Uh, next up is Clover. Uh, make a death save. Jesus. Is that just a straight roll? Yes. yes. 13. Okay, you that is a, a success. Um, next up is Whisper. All right, I didn't, I'm on the ground, so I don't think I saw a quiver fall on the roof. Um, how far away is he? Or he's hidden now. Yeah, he's right. hidden. Um, I'm going to run in the direction that I thought I saw him disappear and see if I can get, get eyes on him again. All right, go ahead and roll a perception check. Twenty-three. Uh, okay. Um, you run forward and attempt to scan around, and you see no sight of the blue. Damn. Does that end your turn? Uh, yeah, that's. Yeah. Um, Gormrod, you're up. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slide next to Clover. Um, can I make a medicine check to try and stabilize her? Sure, go ahead and roll a medicine check for me. Uh, you know, rolling dice that I could read would be helpful. Um, 16. Okay. Uh, I will say with that that's going to be enough to get her stabilized. Um, so. All right, I already said it. So that's going to be enough to get her stabilized. So Clover, you don't need to roll any more death saves, uh, but you are still unconscious. 
Uh, and I'm gonna shout down to the alley. Frog hid. Clovis down. Okay. Is that in your turn? Um. Is there a safe way down to the alley? Um. There's no like ladders or anything set up right here, but uh, you. It's not super high. You get the sense if you were to make a, a relatively good athletics or acrobatics check, you'd be able to jump down. Then I'm going to scoop her up and jump down. All right, go ahead and roll a check for me. Oh, thank God. Uh, 23. Okay. You scoop up the, the limp body of Clover and jump down. Your knee is taking a tremendous amount of weight as you land down. You can uh, groan for a second, but you don't take any damage. You are now centered in between all, right in front of all your friends. Well, I'd be forward, right? Because I ran ahead. Yes, 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 I apologize. Yeah. That's my turn. Okay. Uh, next up is Tristan. I'm going to just um, use my my 35 feet of speed to get as close to whoever we're ch- the person we're the thing we're chasing. Okay. Not worried about anything else, just getting right to it. Okay. Um, the I'm, he they are currently hidden, uh, so you don't see anyone there. I, I'm also going to. Uh, you're going. I'm gonna. As I move into my my last space, going to pluck the sword out of my sheath and just start seeing electrical surges and a surge pop and go into a rage. Okay, and go ahead and roll. eyes go reptilian and my little scales that are kind of visible and what aren't glow a little bit and I go into a I go into rage. All right, go ahead and roll on the uh, wild magic table. I just wanted to grow one. Oh, 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 go back. Sorry, one second, guys. Sorry. Still learning this. Two, which is. I had up and now I lost it. Hold on. Sorry, guys. Where is there we go. Hold on, hold on. To um you teleport up to thirty feet to an unoccupied space you can you can see until you your your rage ends. You can see this effect uh you can see yeah, you can use this effect into, uh again on each of your turns as a bonus action. Okay, so you teleport thirty feet ahead? Yep. Um, uh, 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 you teleport 30 feet up to an unoccupied space you can see. Okay. So you can teleport 30 feet up ahead into the alley. All right. Deal. Um, so whisper, uh, you see Tristan boom, 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 run up next to you. You explode with a burst of rage. You see the the scales across it, that those few little bits of scales that are still on his arms glow a bit and he just disappears. And then poof, reappears 30 feet ahead of you. Uh, Tristan, you want to do anything else on your turn? Yep. All right. Uh, Finnick, you're up. Uh, how far away was the place that we saw him last? Uh, pretty far ahead from here. About 250 feet, I would say. Okay. Um, I'm going to, for my action, I'm going to kneel down and do healing hands on Clover. Okay. Um. So Clover regain four hit points. Okay, Clover, you are conscious again. It's exciting. Um, oh. And then for my bonus action, because I still have expeditious retreats, um, I'm going to dash. Okay. And just run as far forward as I can. You can also get your movement, no? Yeah. Yeah, so then that would be 60 feet total. Okay. All 
All right. Uh, does that on oh. your turn? Uh, that is all I can do, so yes. All right. Next up is the Grung's turn. Uh, they're going to action, dash, bonus action, dash, use their full movement, and are still hidden. And that ends their turn. Clover, you're up. Running as far as I can and hiding. Okay. How far can you run? I think 35 feet, I think. Uh, da -da -da, let me check. Yeah. So you easily catch up to Tristan and uh, Finnick. I'm going to bonus action hide. Uh, if I can't, if there's no place in the alley to hide, I'm going to hide underneath of one of them. Probably Finnick because she goes last. Okay, go ahead and roll a stealth check for me. Seven. Dirty 20. Okay, you feel pretty well hidden. Nice. That end your turn? It does. Okay, Whisper, you're up. I want to still try and find him, so I'm going to dash, like, run, and look, dash, and look. Okay, go ahead and roll a perception check for me. That's a dirty 20. Okay. Uh, you look around, and you see no sight of blue. Yeah. I don't see any movement at all, not even just blue on the roof. Nope, you see no, no signs of the grung. Is that in your turn? Uh, I'll yell back, or I'll yell back to the group and say that I don't know where he went. Okay, Gormrog, you're up. Action, uh, well, movement, 40 feet. Okay. Action, dash, 40 feet. Okay. Bonus action, step of the wind, another 40 feet. Okay. I'm going to look for him. Okay, roll a perception check. That would be a natural 20 plus 3. Nice. Okay. Yes, so. So you look oh. around and you see no sign of the blue man. What? <laughs> they have escaped this scenario, it would seem. Well, that's not. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Um, um, um. Are we out of initiative? I would say yes, with that, we are going to come out of initiative. Uh, Gormrog, I see you run forward and I yell at you, give me a boost. I'm, I want to go up. So I want to jump up. already here. latticed and, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and ready to launch you. I want to jump on the roof to the right where we last saw him. Okay. Go ahead and roll a uh, acrobatics check or an athletics, whichever you prefer, uh, with advantage because Gormog is helping you. Okay. 16. Okay. Easy enough. Uh, Gormog's help you launches you up and you are able to gather yourself onto the top of the, well, the nearby building. I want to run to the last place I saw him. Okay. And I want to look to see if I see tracks or anything okay go ahead and roll an investigation check that's five okay <laughs> um kind of hard to tell up here i mean this there are tile roofs and you get the sense that there is not a whole lot of ways for tracks to make their way on the solid roof I don't see anything. 
Clover's leaving any wet spots? Oh. Too hard to tell. What'd you say, Clover? Uh, where where was Clover hidden? Uh, I would say you found a little a little okay. tuck in on the side there. Oh, damn! That makes this a little bit less funny. But um, Clover is badly injured, and she's just gonna throw up. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> yeah. That's it. <laughs> Just gonna lean against a wall and try to catch my breath at this point. Before uh, Tristan's rage runs out, his anger for not being able to actually hit something that to, to kill something, he just in a rage where you see kind of fangs come out of his mouth when his mouth open, he screams and just starts hitting, he's hitting his sword on the floor and each angle is hard, screaming as loud as he can. Just, <sighs> And a big outburst before his rage fades, and he falls to his knees. Okay. I hear that, and I run over from the roof and look down. And like, mm. all right, everyone, what's the plan? We need to evacuate this town. Town's too big. They're not going to evacuate. I need to find someone to give me some medicine. Let's do that. Back to the Platinum Dragon's Rest. I don't need to be resurrected. They're healers. It's the only reason I suggested it. You got someplace else you want to go? No, maybe we have to go back to Marie Lynn's. Let's find someone around here. I'm sure something will come up. Oh, Co Clover, I could carry you on my back. I don't want you straining yourself too much. And that would be fantastic. Okay. Hey, I just sort of squat down so she can just hop on. Sure. Finnick, go ahead and roll an athletics check at disadvantage. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> because I said so. Why are you being so mean to me? <laughs> yeah, Why are you being so mean to me, Joe? That is a 12. Okay. It, Clover is relatively light. So it's while <laughs> the offer was nice, you do feel a bit of a struggle as you make, her the, uh, make your way to wherever you end up deciding to go, but you're able to do it. It's Why? Fine. I ride on their backs all the time. <laughs> it's because right. I'm They're tired. Because yeah. <laughs> she's exhausted. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. And I'll call Gormog over to like help me get down so I don't get hurt. I'm going to down. Okay. Easy enough. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, easy enough. You don't have to roll for it. Between the two of you, you're able to safely descend from the, the roof. Let's Where are we go. all headed? Where are we headed? Towards Marie Lynn's and hoping to find some kind of healer on the way. Okay. Um, I'll say one of you, whoever has the best, uh, just roll a. I'll say persuasion check as you make your way through the crowd, just trying to find someone who's able to heal someone. Me? I know I have, I think I have the highest charisma. It's not me. You tell you that. Me. <laughs> yeah, I did that. I got a yeah. I got a decent one and I'm not exhausted. Nice. So I'll I'll roll. For it. <laughs> Twelve. Twelve. Um What's so many nines? Is the music not playing? It is. It's low. It's I low. It. Okay. Um Okay. I'll say with the 12, you don't necessarily find a healer per se, but you are able to find someone who kind of. Would it be too late to assist? Just sort of like, because she's on my back and we're both like slightly injured. Just be like, can somebody help us just a little bit, please? Well, she already had advantage, so. Did she? I didn't have advantage. 
Oh, I, yeah, I said roll with advantage because oh. it's like the whole group kind of. Uh... Somebody, please. What was my original one? 12. Oh, oh well, this one's lower. So. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, there are like clerics and other people from the, the temple ward kind of making their way through and attempting to help people from the explosions. Um, so I will say you are able to find uh, a, a, a cleric that is able to give each of you uh, one, one dose of, um, what's the healing spell? I don't know. I'm a brain farting here. Cure wounds. Cure wounds. Thank cure you. Cure wounds. Yes. So testy. Greater cure wounds. No, just cure wounds. Just Mass cure wounds. Complete, <laughs> complete cure wounds. Mass just, heal. Just regular just old cure heal. Come curious, kill your wounds. Okay, so. First, uh, on you, uh, Clover, because you are really hurt, you get nine hit points, and you, uh, Finnick, you get six. Do I get any? Do you want one? Yeah. Yes. We okay. were hurt in an explosion. Okay. Uh, Whisper, you get six. Gormrog, you get ten. Tristan, you get nine. I'll 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 give him a gold. Just like thank you for your help. Ah, uh, th please. This is a time of great emergency. It's no no gold necessary. Thank you, thank you. And they continue to make their way through the crowd, attempting to help everyone that they can. Um, with that, you all begin to make your way down the block towards Marie Lynn's. Um. In light of the several other explosions, there are no guards in front of it anymore. Um, you see the few remaining staff members of Marie Lynn's in front of it, still covered in soot and smoke. Uh, you see uh, Marie Lynn just standing there closest to the rubble, looking at it with Rosalind kind of tending to Danny and uh, fry in the behind her. As you uh, approach, Mar uh, Rosalind's the first to notice you, and she kind of turns. <sighs> I heard there was more explosions. I'm glad to see you all all right. I run right to right to her, and half. Who is everything okay? Are you guys are are you okay? And I start looking around, like making sure she's okay, and looking around and just pretending like there's something that could be okay. But right, um, as you run to her, she kind of stands up, you know, getting ready to grab, uh, getting ready for the weight of your body against hers, and she kind of turns, mm -hmm. bounces back a little bit, but it pulls you in and kind of rubs your back in the way that you're familiar with that motherly embrace that she is. Given you several times in the past. Um, well, uh, we're as okay as we can be. Um, Stir and Seamus didn't make it. Um, but I'm glad you're okay, Tristan. It's, um, I'm just glad you weren't here for it. So I'm going to put my head down into her shoulder and just go into one of those just in, into tears, not into unbreakable sounding to just, just head down and just in tears. Yeah. What are the rest of you doing? I am walking around and I'm removing all of the posters that say that it was the clasp that did it. And okay. Just, um, just ripping them up and dropping them onto the ground because I mean, town's destroyed anyway. What's a few more pieces of litter? <laughs> okay. Um, I see anyone on the rooftops or watching it from the streets. Um, I'd like to help. With that. Sure. Go ahead and roll a perception check at advantage, Gormrog. Okay. 
Cool, 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 cool. Two of the exact same rolls. Plus three is 14. Okay. Um, 11, 11. Looking around, there's certainly people that are looking at the rubble and kind of like being nosy neighbors almost and making their way over and like, what happened? What? Oh my gosh. And the typical uh, curiosity for morbid shit that people have. Um, but you don't notice anyone like eyeing you from the shadows per se. Whenever some nosy neighbor comes over to ask like, oh, what happened? What's going on? I would like to say it was the myriad. There's there's a man creature. He's a grung and he's blue and his name is Redup. And he organized all of these explosions. He is the head of a gang called the myriad. Oh my goodness. What is the myriad? They're a terrible gang. And I don't know why they want to blow up West Run, but they're on a mission. So keep an eye out and keep your family safe. Oh my gosh. Oh, okay. Um, this sign says it was the clasp, though. They're trying to frame them. Oh, gosh. Okay, well, thank you. Um, did anyone want to do anything else in particular? I'm intentionally standing back um, from Marie Lynn's, trying to, trying to distance myself from it. Okay. Can I make an insight check on Gormog? Go ahead. While she does that, I'm going to take my embrace from Marie Lynn and try and look at all the, all the people who are looking and staring. And in a small bit of anger, just everyone leave. Uh, roll an intimidation check. Also, I got a 17. Okay. Uh, I'm Gormrog. Gormrog, go ahead and roll either a deception or a persuasion. You're trying to hide whatever. something. Yeah, whatever, whatever you feel the roll would be appropriate for. 19. Ten. What'd you roll, Tristan? Ten. Okay. Um, some people like kind of shock, get a little bit of shock at your outburst, but they they kind of like all start to move along, but no one seems to move with any haste. Um, it's at that time that Marie Lynn kind of turns and looks at all of you. Did you kill them at least? Not yet. We're Here trying. We um, real quick, how does everyone look uh, health wise? Does anyone need heal healing still? Yeah, I mean, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Clover and Whisper need healing. Okay. Um. Rosalind is going to uh, give you both uh, a low. Clover, you get 21 hit points. Uh, Whisper, you get 17 hit points. It is at this time that the little bit of crowd that has kind of like given a wide berth around the, the ruins of Marie Lynn's parts at one end. And you see a large middle-aged Goliath woman, uh, long uh, dark raven hair tied in this long braid behind her head, uh, the tattoos around her head form almost like a halo, uh, this jagged halo. And her eyes, the tattoos explode outwards like two starbursts around her eyes. Um, she wears a long 
navy blue dress with the, the sides open and you see this long silvery gray tunic underneath um, that comes just about mid thigh the left side of her chest you see the symbol of the shields uh, a symbol you're all familiar with at this point uh, flanking either side of her you see a half elven woman uh, approximately 32 years old cropped curled black hair Green eyes, about 5'3", skinny, copper, sunburned skin with this elaborate moon and star piercing in her right ear with a simple stud on the left side, wearing just pat like just various bits of armor. It all matches, but it's no, no like uniform or anything. Uh, on the other side, you see a middle-aged woman, uh, human, with cropped, wavy, golden hair, gray eyes, Muscular build, about five six. Large scar on her right arm and a, a large scar on the right side of her neck. Uh, both of them are carrying long swords with uh, shields strapped to their sides. Uh, as the Goliath woman makes her way over, she comes up right to Marie Lynn. I'm sorry that this has happened to you. Um, we, of course, will do everything we can to help you rebuild. Um, do you have any insights as to who might be behind these attacks? We've just had several more over in the market ward as well, towards the Jumping Jackal. Um, I, I uh, believe my... My sons, Gwamrog and Tristan, will be able to explain a bit further. Uh, very well. The Goliath turns to look at both of you. I don't believe we've met. I am uh, Lord Mayor Lysandra Carlos. Um, I would love to hear any report you have about the incidents we've been dealing with the last two days. Well, Lord Mayor Sandra Carlos, uh, it's very nice to meet you. Uh, I'm Gomrog, spelled the same forward and backwards, pretty easy to remember. That's Tristan. These are my friends, Finnick, Whisper, Clover. Um, we were here when it happened. It was well, the Myriad. The Myriad, you say? Well... Mm -hmm. That is certainly interesting. We've that's um, news to say the least. Clearly, yeah, because very obviously the myriad would not say that it was the myriad. Of course, I mean the clasp is a pretty big presence here, and they want them out before they work their way in. Therefore. They're going to do everything that they can to disrepute the clasp. And then they'll take over. Well, they've been doing a pretty good job of it so far. Mm. So, so we've been discovering. Who are again? I am uh, the Lord Mayor of Western, uh, Lissandra Carlos. You're looking for a blue, wrong person. His name is Rodop. And I believe that he is the orchestrator of all of these explosions. Okay, what makes you to believe that? I'd also posit that, uh, sorry, Clover, if I may add. Go ahead. Um, he's also responsible for some of the creatures that have been let loose on the city in recent weeks. What leads you to believe that this uh, grung? is responsible for these incidents. He was announcing it <laughs> from the literal rooftops of my home. I mean, what makes you think they're myriad? Because they told us. We were working. We've confronted them before. I'm sure you heard the incidents of people going missing in town, right? Yes, I'm aware. Okay, well, me and my friends here, 
we actually went down into the sewers and we discovered a cave of escaped monster spiders. And we freed as we freed who was living and we returned the bodies. That was us. So we made a deal with the spell word. I that's what they're called, right? Spell right. And spell the, spell, sorry, um, um we we worked with the spell right to find out how these monsters were escaping and that led us to the myriad interesting Plain and simple do we uh, still have the uh documents they forged pretending to be the clasp i believe so yeah, yeah. And, i believe finnick has them yeah i do and, uh, you know, since we've discovered it, they may have moved, but we even know where their original hiding spot was in the sewers. I mean, when I say we believe that it was them, I mean, I would give, a, I, I, I would stand on a grave and on them say, like, it was them. We well, know. Stand behind Clover, it was no them. matter what. Um, go ahead and roll a. Persuasion check, Clover, at advantage. At advantage? Thank goodness. Um, that ended up being a 15. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, so pretty solid. Yeah, my first you, one was that. You said you have the documents still. May I see them? I'll pull them out of my bag and my pockets and hand them over. Hmm. She kind of reviews them for a moment before... Passing them back to you. Well, this is certainly interesting to say the least. We have, um, I also have a have a map here to their original hiding space. But be careful. There's doors that come to life and try to eat you down there. Okay. Um. Let's see here. How can I put this bluntly? For several years now, we've been doing our best to root out some of the corruption that has plagued the city. Um, the gods can't be trusted. The spell right is constantly working against us for his own benefit. Um, my predecessor has put us in an exorbitant amount of debt to to them and the league in general and has put us in a very weakened position. As you can see, I don't even use guards as... I don't even use any of the shields as my own personal guard. Um, There's nothing you probably don't need it. That being said, I would like for you all to help us in rooting out this... You seem to have a pretty good grasp. You... Sh- Proven yourselves quite capable of tracking them down thus far. Maybe we could share resources and root out this infection before it becomes a true disease. You just met us. Well, you've already shown me that you've done quite a bit of work in tracking them down thus far, and at least you two have a personal vendetta against them. That might make us... uh... Liability, wouldn't you say? I'm more concerned with him being cut and dis- destroyed than any sort of trial at this point. And by what means would you like that to happen? Well, I think she means cut him down with your sword. Make examples out of them if need be. If you are able to get any information on the class, but while the spell writes, I'm sh- that can assist us in dismantling any further corruption, it would be quite useful as well. I just want to insight her to make sure that she means what she says and that she is who she says she is. Sure, go ahead and roll an insight check. Okay. Insight is a plus three, so that is an 11. <laughs> okay. Um, with, based off an 11, uh, she is pretty blunt, um, and you get the sense that she's in, like, uh, 
in in the, in a mode of just trying to put out all the fires that are going on right now, and she seems to be a little bit desperate in reaching out to people who may actually be able to help. Um, but she does seem to be honest in at least believing the things you've said and believing at least you have some ability to get the things done that need to be done. As the Lord Mayor, that's what she called herself, right? Yep. As the Lord Mayor, I assume people of Westron listen to you, right? Yes. I don't think, and I don't know, I know the other thing, I don't know this, but I don't think that these attacks are over. I feel like personally, I would go as far to say that if people can evacuate the town, they should. Mm. I don't think that these are that these bombings are gonna stop until the myriad is stopped. Roll a persuasion check. Um, be a high DC though. Six. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, having 50,000 souls depart the city is... We are just not prepared to handle that sort of exodus at this time. Uh, I will... Uh, obviously, we will instill a curfew at this time and ensure that everyone is confined to their quarters for the time being until we can stop these terrorist attacks. I, if you if you do have any security that you trust, I think you need to have some on the rooftops. Well, I'll use the planes, the guards, to at least keep the streets clear. Um, the my the uh, retrievers will be assisting you when they can, and I will have them clearing rooftops and attempting to gather as much information as possible. As it's silent, I'm gonna just is Marie Lynn still around me or Rosalind? Yeah, they're they're all right in the general area. Yeah, yeah, I'm just gonna go and as I walk past as I'm walking around aimlessly, just to her ear. I'm going to kill everyone who did this to us. And then just walk off. Not away. Just in the same circle, same around. Uh, do we have a deal? Depends. You said share resources and we help you, but what do we get out of it? Well, I will I think 5,000 gold to start with. 2,500 up front to cover costs that you may need to in your investigation. Another 2,500 upon completion. It's an extra 3,000. If you, any information that we can use to take down either the clasp as well and the spell right. For the information that we just gave you. Which information was that? Like literally all of the information. No, no, no. Like which, which part are you talking about? Like, uh, like towards what? the spell right or the clasp? Just everything that Finnick just gave her. Oh yeah, that's all for the myriad. She just said that she was going to give us gold for more information, but we just gave her information, and I'm wondering if we're going to get compensated for that. The... Never mind. Move on. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> so, um, just to make sure I got this, you're offering us 2,500 gold right now. Yes. Another twenty five if we take out the myriad. Yes. Which is, you know, a crime syndicate. But uh sure. And then an extra three thousand for information that can help take down the clasp and or the spell right, Histic Salgum. Correct. I'm gonna look at Clover and say, What do you think, boss? 
I think that we do need 2,500 gold right now to get us everything we need to get going. So I'm inclined to take it. Friends, pals, brother. Can well. we trust her? I'd say so. Should I tell her about Hyster? I think that would be wise. All right. Oh, then I want to get her attention. You said you'd pay us for your for stuff against the spell rate too, right? Correct. Well, did you know that he's releasing uh or he's looking to take over replace the guards in the city? He has brought it to my attention in the past, yes. And he's working with the class. In what way? They've got some business arrangement going. I don't really understand, but it involves hurting animals. Do you have uh, any proof of this? The class collects the animals and brings them to the spell right where they test these automatons against different threats. This was what we discovered during the investigation that we were hired for for the spell right. Interesting. Uh, do you have any proof of them working with the clasp? We've got a griffin. We found a griffin. Is anybody who is capable of speaking with animals besides our wonderful friend Whisper here? Didn't somebody swipe a paper off of the uh, spell right's desk? I don't know if it pertained any information to the class, but I thought somebody did. Yes, you can find your way into the Spellrite Sanctum. There's a map of how to get to his room. Uh, I have I have been to the Spellrite's office in, in the past. We have... No, no, not the office. The room behind the office where he tests these things. The danger room. Where he's building them. Where he keeps the animals and kills them on a whim. I understand that that is, while morally wrong, that is not enough for me to necessarily imprison him. If you can find him working with the clasp in some way and getting me some sort of proof as far as that, then I can make a move on him. Well, what about uh, his secretary illegally stealing people's blood and tracking them? Yeah, she gives bad vibes. Um, I don't know about vibes. I'm not, or I, is she like strapping people down and drawing their blood and taking it from them? Scratching them. If you met her, you'd understand. I mean, she'd probably do that to Lyndon if. Never mind. Who is Lyndon? Don't worry about it. Born Not important. Them. Oh, did we mention that this frog guy killed her brother? As I gesture. Well, I'm sorry for your loss, dear. It's a very no, complicated... no, like he's fine now. <laughs> but they're actively targeting and killing people. Not just general destruction damage, like a myriad. Okay, a myriad. Yes, it's killing and destructing people. Okay. I think we're doing more than building damage. I think we have an agreement. We will work for you to deal with the myriad. We will accept this deal of 2,500 now, 2,500 later, and an additional 3,000 should we provide extra information that leads to the taking down of the class and the spell right histic salgum. Are we all in agreement on that? At oh, yeah. least for the time being. And and if you want us to work with you, then you need to respect our belief that it is the myriad 
and not the class, and we need you to help us shut down the false rumors. I will begin to have the appropriate reports made. In that but case... The, the documents you've given me have satisfied at least that we can begin to try and focus the investigation in that direction. In that case, I am in. Very well. I uh, I will have a contract written up. Uh, you can meet me at my residence in the next 24 hours to officially sign everything. For now, um, I will have the funds brought over. Where would you like them delivered to? Like here. Right here? Very well. I will have someone deliver the funds today. Um, what name should I place on the contract as far as your mercenary band? I don't think we ever came up with a name, did we? Very well. Um, when we go to sign the contract, very well. we'll have a name for you. Very well. I can fill that in tomorrow. That being said, I, uh, I have more issues that I must attend to. I look forward to meeting with you all once again tomorrow. She turns and to your place of residence would be um Gormrog, you you would easily know where the place is. It's okay. Just you know, um, making sure. I, I got it, Fennec. Don't worry about it. It's the it's, it's in, the Lord Mayor's home. Like it's it's in the Opal Ward. Okay, and I've been here for how many days? <laughs> I, I know where it is. Don't worry about it. Oh. It's like right next to City Hall. There's actually... Never mind. It's okay. No, go ahead. I'll bring it up later. Sure. Okay. So with that, she goes and departs. What would you all like to do in the meantime? I want to go back out there. I don't feel good just being here. I'm going to watch like the three walk. as they walk away. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Continue. I just, I feel like we lost and I don't feel good being here. We need to stock up on supplies before we go after them again. I agree with both of you on that. Also, Clover, solid negotiating at, at the end there. That was a key part of that for sure. Thank you. I was on debate team back in school. That was really good. I'm proud of you for that. Because they made fun of me, so I had to leave. But, But it was a good week. I learned a lot. <clears throat> but you're right. We do need to stock up on supplies and the money that go. they're sending us. The money that they're sending us will come later today. Mm. Um. I do need to report to the Cobalt Reserve at some point. I can do so in a letter. But at some point, I do need to report to them. I just don't want what to else? stand still. Well, um, we can see if Marie Lynn needs any help. I'm sure there's a lot to do here. I also am kind of interested in going back to the Jumping Jackal and seeing if Golash and the rest of the clasp is there or if they've left. Well, Mary Lynn's right there, so I'm going to turn around and say, can we do anything to help? Okay. Um, as you walk over, um, you see 
Marie, Rosalind has kind of made her way next to Marie Lynn now. Um, and you kind of notice in front of them now, just slightly ahead of what would be the remnants of the front of Marie Lynn's. You see the two, the, I apologize, the five white tarps kind of laid out covering the bodies of the people that you had known previously. Um, you look at Marie Lynn and you see that stoic expression on her face. Uh, she doesn't respond to you as you ask the question, but Rosalind kind of turns. Oh, this, we just have to rebuild now. Not much left for us to do. This isn't right. I don't look at the bodies. Okay. Um, go ahead. Nothing right about this. Kristen, we're going to fix this. No one here did anything to anyone. Um, I'm just going to walk in front of Tristan and just try and make dead eye contact. Tristan, I understand what you're feeling, but I need you to understand. We are going to make this right. We are going to. We're going to do them justice. I know this was your home. But currently, wallowing around isn't getting us anywhere. So take that anger and do as Gormrog said and use it. Where do I start? Well, Where do I fight? We can't fight now. We need... We need to get stronger. And currently... A place to stay. Why don't we start there? I don't... I don't know you very well, and I don't know them very well. But I do know something. I'm not going to stop. None of us are. I'm going to keep going forward. I'm going to fight. I'm going to end in a rage. Fight! Until this. Um, as you do that, you just notice Finnick just start to tense up. And she takes a step back. There is a, a surge in his eyes and his fangs come out a little bit as it happens and it fades and he drops to his knees and um, I am just going to lay a hand on Tristan's shoulder and I'm going to cast Calm Emotions. Okay. Uh, uh, make a charisma saving throw. <laughs> Four. <laughs> cool. I'm suppressing your emotions. I'm not suppressing them. I'm trying to <laughs> mellow you out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you just yeah, feel this warm energy start from your shoulder and just as is a blanket wrapping around you. You see his eyes look up at her and they keep, they, they spark from reptilian to regular and keep going back and forth and then fade into regular eyes. 
well up, no tears, and then sits, and he puts his head on her knee, whatever close to the knee, and just doesn't move. Um, as Finnick and Tristan are having their moment, um, Clover is going to go sit next to uh, Marie Lynn and Roslyn, and she's going to start just rubbing their backs, and she's going to pull out her goodie bag um, that was given to her earlier in the day and open it up and give both of them some food and tell them, um, I know it's been a long day, but you have to eat. You can't rebuild without fuel. And just try to comfort them a little bit. Okay. I'm so proud of her. Um, they both kind of take the snacks and begin to nibble at it themselves. And you see it, it does help a bit as they, their faces kind of relax from the expressions, the, the hardened expressions they have as they kind of just look upon the destruction that's been wrought in front of them. Um, it's at this time that Fry wakes up out of like the shock that he's been sitting in. You see him begin to make his way over towards the the tarps, the little. The I mean, his body is covered in, in gashes from the explosion at this point, and he. He kind of goes over and you see the pained expression in his face. Wake, wake up. You said this isn't what we promised. Wake up. This isn't right. I don't. How do you even mess this up? You kind of just hear him start to wail and whine. And you see Danny stand up and make his way over and kind of pulls him, puts his hand on his shoulder and kind of starts to pull him back from the tarp. His, his little hand grasps hold of it and begins to try and tug it up off them. What's the plan, everyone? Fly. Other than being massively depressed after that, I don't know. <laughs> what time Fly. is it? Um, it is probably early afternoon at this point, like one o'clock, two o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, you call out the Fry, but he's not even recognizing any other voices around him. I'm going to walk in front of him between him and the sheet. I'm just going to use my foot to snap it out of his grasp. I'm going to kneel in front of him. And the first time in the entirety of my time with him, I'm going to hug him. Um, as you step on the sheet, and it, it slips from his grasp, you already see the tears start to kind of well up in his eyes. And as you reach out and uh, as you reach out and wrap your arms around his small body, you feel him just kind of crumple in your grasp. Just, just a hot, it's not a pretty cry. It's just high pitched wail, but he buries his face into your shoulder and just stays there for a minute. We're going to rebuild Marie Lynn's and we're going to have the most beautiful funeral for um, ones that you lost. Joe, I do have a question. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. Am I able to sort of look through the rubble and see if I can find anything of like sentimental value value or something that I think would be of sentimental value for them? Uh, go ahead and roll an investigation check. That would be a 21. Okay. God damn. Um, who that was a you... disadvantage. <laughs> You're looking for uh, Fry specifically? Um, of, For anybody. Just Rosalind, Marie Lynn, Danny, just anything, even Gordon Rogg or Tristan, something of sentimental value. Okay. I will say. How long do you want to look first off? Like, if you find one thing, you're done, or you're going to try and pick for a few things? Uh, at least one thing. Or if I find something and it's broken, I'll even grab it. Okay. Um, I'll say you pick through for about 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and try and sift through the rubble. The The first floor is not completely destroyed, just but a lot of the, the ceiling has been collapsed in. So you are able to kind of like make your way in and find small bits of room that are still there. Um, but uh, you make your way through and uh, you first area you come through is the, the small uh, like greeting stand that Seamus used to say, Seamus would sit at. And it, a good portion of it is, is, Cracked and crushed and just drenched in blood. And uh, as you make your way in through that, you are come into the main foyer area and you see the entirety of the, the countertop area is has held up a bit of, of the, the ceiling. So you're able to kind of crawl over and get in and you make your way into the kitchen. And a good portion of that is is burnt and crisp. The, the wood is, is still uh, crick, uh, crackling with heat. So nothing is on fire. It's just kind of that embers that burn a little bit. Um, it's there you find the, the little aprons that Star and Fry would wear hung up still on a, a set of hooks against the wall. The wall, the the hook itself has kind of cracked down, and they hang at this little bit of an angle. But you do see the two aprons there hanging, um, and you're able to kind of gather those up together. Okay, are they singed or torn at all? Um, they're dirty, but they seem to have survived the the majority of damage. Okay. Then I'll grab those and bring them back to where Fry and Gormrog are at. Okay. I, I I found these. I don't know if they're of... I, I figured you might want them. And just sort of... He uh, wordlessly kind of shifts his attention to you for a moment as you kind of lay them down. And he just reaches his hand out and grabs hold on both of them and pulls them in tight. All right. So... Unless anyone had anything else they wanted to do. No. Uh, So as you kind of go through this time gathering the little bits of rubble and mementos that you do, about an hour passes and a, uh, another, the, the uh, human woman that was with the Lord Mayor appears and passes to you the agreed amount of gold. All right. Now we need a place 
where we can stay and we need to get what we need to take down these fucking bastards. So they no can. stupid question. The apartments that were blown up, that wouldn't by any chance be my house, would it? No. No, your apartment is next to the well, right right by Marie Lynn's. Um you can see it from where you are. It's still intact, but the uh, windows are blown out, but it is, for the most part, still intact. I can stay in my place. It's not much. But it's a place. I just worry about their being attacked next. That's my only concern, but other than that. Well... We're gonna. We, we can take turns keeping watch overnight. It's still daytime, and I'm not tired. We don't have to rest um, yet, Whisper. I'm just saying, Miss Roslyn. Yes, that extends to you too. If you, uh, you and the others need a place to stay. I appreciate your home that. has always been my home, so my home is your home. I'm sure. Uh... One bit of rest will do everyone good, Gromrog. Are you guys ready to go shopping? <laughs> yeah. <Heard. laughs> okay. So, as you all taking your newly acquired coin with your mission on hand, you prepare for a shopping episode. As... <laughs> It doesn't have to be a long episode. I can stop pretty quickly. <laughs> but that is where we are going to call it for tonight, I think. Because I have a sense that the next leg will be a long one. So that's where we're going to call it for tonight. I hope everyone had a good game. Um, uh, if anyone's anyone got anything? And then on a bit of a sad low note. Yeah, yes. I'm traumatized, so. Traumatizing uh, episode, that's fine. Uh, Goodberry, next week, fucking awesome guest. Can't wait to see that episode. It's going to be really cool. Um, uh, check out our VODs on YouTube. We're in the trek to be monetized there. So like, comment, subscribe, share, all the good shit on YouTube because we need, we need the YouTube to be successful so we can keep making this stuff. <laughs> and then do we want to raid someone? Yes. Do we have someone to raid? I do. Okay. Let me get up. A Let's previous go. Goodberry guest. Ooh. Ooh. Awesome. <laughs> Who is it? So I can. Um, I'm going to raid it. The initiative order is playing something right now. Tabletop. But I've got an ad, so I can't see what they're doing. Uh, while we wait, I'd like to shout out my mother, who is in the audience this evening for the first time. So, hi, Mom. What up, Mama? Hi, Dom's mom. Mom. Um, oh. Thanks for supporting me. I appreciate you. So sweet. Aww. So... My previous guest is not playing right now, but it looks like they're playing a Fallout Wasteland themed RPG. So. Yes. Okay, so that's where we're gonna raid. I am already following them. Raid. Initiative order. Start raid. Yay. All right, everyone. Uh, look forward to seeing you all next week, and we'll be back for Forging Fates in two weeks. Uh, we love you all. Good night. <laughs>